It is uh, Tuesday morning, like a little bit after six. I just prepped uh, my water for a meal. I'm gonna eat my uh, my freeze dried meal this morning. I gotta drop probably about a mile, mile and a half away. Mm, my lips are swollen. My talking might seem a little weird. My battery pack is pretty much uh, finito. So I'm going to pick up my new battery pack at uh, drop five. I'm hoping that being out there multiple nights with a temperature rise and, and it didn't diminish it that much. I didn't even think about that. But uh, there's a possibility, a strong possibility. God, my hair is just crazy. It's like frozen in place. Ugh. There's a strong possibility that uh, I'm going to be getting to <clears throat> drop six today too. And if that's the case, then uh, things are going to be weird because I'm not sure what to do with that. It's uh, cold for sure, but that's every morning. It's getting warmer throughout the week, which means I'm sweating a lot more <clears throat> later in the day. There's a strong possibility I'm getting to Goreville today, so which puts me pretty much a day ahead of the schedule. So if I can keep that up, then I might be off trail by Friday. I don't know what the trail ahead holds, but uh, we'll see. I know after Goreville, it's the last uh, 50 miles. And then I heard that of that, it's 27 miles of road walking. So over half of it is road walking. So it may go faster than I thought. I'm just possessed at this point. My muscles are just like in a, I feel like my body is just an engine that's self-propelled at this point. Like the only thing that bothers me is my lips and my feet. I had two blisters on my left foot. I popped those last night and put some triple antibiotic on and bandaged them overnight. Uh, they'll probably redevelop throughout the day. The bottoms of my feet get kind of hard, you know, feeling kind of crabby. I can manage that. The lip thing, that developed because I realized I needed to keep my mouth shut while I was hiking. And uh, I usually don't. I usually breathe through my mouth and leave my mouth wide open and all the moisture out of my body just escapes right out of my mouth. In order to keep my mouth shut, I would purse my lips to get like, mm, like that and drive my teeth down into my lips to lock them in place, to force myself to not open my mouth. And now I've got like, I think a cut or something on the top of my lips on the inside of my mouth and it hurts like crazy and it's swollen now and it's just, uh, it's hard to manage. But yeah, um, there's a strong possibility I'm gonna be off this trail Friday. I mean, I didn't record a lot yesterday because I was doing a lot of struggling and then just like moving like as fast as I could. But, uh, a lot of it would have just been anger because <laughs> I got lost multiple times. They don't, they don't really come out and deal with anything when there's down trees or whatever. So you have to kind of make your way around them, but then it's easy to, with all the leaves on the ground, it's easy to lose the trail. I did that a few times. Um, and then trails that were just jagged rock for miles and miles going up and down hill. It's like, oh my God, it's just not, it doesn't favor the hiker. It's more for, I know it's an equestrian trail. It's set up for like ATVs, horses, things like that. And hiking, it's just like l low priority for, you know, the conservative conservancy and all these other people. There's more money being thrown at the equestrian side and I get it. I mean, this is a poor region of the state <clears throat> that Chicago couldn't care less to send money down here to improve the Shawnee National Forest. I don't think the fe I think the federal government, if they give anything, it's probably just one set locked fee, locked amount every year, and uh, nobody gives it. Nobody cares. Nobody's trying to to boost more tourism and and hiker hiking down here. It's a real shame because it is a beautiful part of the state. There's a lot of beautiful sites. The trail could just be improved. 
I have, I'm going to have a whole video on what I think is wrong with the river, river to river trail <laughs> and what I think could improve it dramatically and make it a much better, uh, location for hikers. But, uh, I mean, that's why a lot of people say they hear about this trail and they're like, and they start it and then they don't finish it because <clears throat> it's rugged, it's grueling. And the, like, there's no water, the water sources you pull from, I wouldn't recommend. I've seen a lot of different water sources in my time hiking and these are probably by far the worst. And, uh, I tried at Les Creek and it, the water tasted like, tasted like horse manure smells. I had a few drinks of that. I'm like, no more. I'm not even going to give myself a chance, that bacteria a chance or virus a chance or whatever to get a lot into my body and then multiply and then send me off trail. So I stuck to my drops and I, to me, the daily drop system is about the only way I could have imagined getting through this. Now I packed a lot more food than I needed. I'm, I'm going to have to start leaving food behind and actually the last drop I went to, I left food. But I wanted to make sure I had it just in case. It's okay to leave it behind. I've left some clothes behind. I've left some food behind. I'm going back to pick it all up when I'm done. But it's just, uh, I didn't want to, I don't have to take it with me if I don't have to. The water was the most essential part of it. <laughs> There's certain parts where I probably would have done more drops than just daily for the water, especially starting out. But uh, I've got a pretty good handle on it now. Now I'm, I'm over, overrunning my water considerably so but that's because i'm pushing more miles than i have prior to this so i'm, I'm hoping that uh i don't know if i'm going to mix my electrolyte bottle now and then just fill up the, the these other bottles with water from that and then just leave the rest or camel up while i'm there i don't know i know i'm not going to eat anymore because this will be about the only thing i can get through I want to be indoors. <laughs> I mean, I was indoors at, at a shotgun Eddie's and I kind of didn't want to leave shotgun Eddie's. I was, I just didn't want to return to this cold, but, uh, the sooner I get everything packed up and, and back on the trail, the warmer I get. So I just got to eat this meal and then get, get that taken care of. So that'll be what I do now. I guess this used to be a, a railroad track they've converted into a bike trail. And down there is a little bridge, there's a train bridge that they converted into a suspension or a uh, bike bridge. I may see it from the bottom, but I'm not walking down there just to get a shot from the top. So here, I'll zoom in. There you go. <laughs> Going under some trees. Yeah, this is definitely all terrain territory. Hoot. Going back downhill again, huh? Well, I'm super close to my drop. I think it's like right down at the end of this little path here. I don't remember it at all, so it'll be interesting to reconnect with it. That's right, we're doing it again. Although I don't trust this one as much. Looks like that one tree is just kind of suspended. Yeah. I guess there's enough of the base, so it's over the other top of the other one. Okay. I'm at my uh, drop, and I'm getting bottles ready. I'm getting my uh, electrolyte bottle going while I fill the rest. Although I don't think the need to camel up is as important now. I think I'm managing water pretty well. Okay, so left drop five. And I'm crossing under I-24 here shortly. I'll get some video of that and some photos. 
And then, uh, haven't been looking at my storage, so I don't know how much uh, of my uh, storage I have left on this phone. I just picked up a fresh battery pack, so I'm good on battery for the rest of the trip. I just gotta figure out how long that's gonna be. Well, here we are. Two, well, you can see both. The four lanes of I-24. That's the route that we usually take down to Georgia. And I'm crossing under it. Ah, some more uh, graffiti. Get a photo. I love you, Buffy. I'm uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, so I don't remember half the stuff I say from day to day. So I probably said, Oh, I'm making good time. Oh, I think I'm gonna be done here. I think I'm gonna get, get, get to here by here. I don't know. I-24, part of it behind me. Northbound I-24. Uh, I probably bitched about the trail a bunch. Talked about different things. I don't, I don't know, I feel like I've said all I can say, now it's just getting through it. You know, to the after today though, is another milestone for me. I may have mentioned that yesterday. It'll be the longest number of consecutive days I've hiked. As well as the longest I've hiked. Longest I've hiked alone. But not the longest I've hiked of any trail. That will be... That'll technically be a little after Goreville. So, we will see. That'll probably be tomorrow. And then that'll be pretty much the last milestone. I'll, this trail will be all of it. All my records set right here in Shawnee National Forest. Just occurred to me I haven't been checking emails. I don't want to know what's going on at work. I really don't. I'm just putting it out of mind. There's always time for that when I get back. I'm just going to have hundreds upon hundreds of emails to go through. Might as well enjoy the time I get out here to the fullest before I have to return to that. Okay, I don't even follow the road. I cross right over. But you know what's funny? Not a single visible indicator that this is the path. I'm at Dutchman Road and uh, walking across the little levee here where this pond is. Uh, I'd probably mark this as a water source. Maybe. It's not really a creek, but you might be able to go down to the marina and dip your stuff in. I may do that. Although I haven't really been doing it for a while now. Well, whoever was nice enough to haul this table up here, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm going to take myself a little break. No fire, though. I'm in Goreville. And I'm eating. <laughs> Meaning mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, and chicken tenders. I could have eaten inside the place, but I don't know. I, I, I'm afraid that I stink, because after today, it's been like an uphill climb for like the first 10 miles. 
So I was pretty sweaty. I probably do stink. I look disheveled. I got this hat to hide my horrible hair. But no hat fits my head. <laughs> so I'm going to sit here and enjoy this and then I'm going to head off and uh, make my way to, a, I think, an early camp tonight. Even though I think it's one o'clock now, it's going to take me probably two hours. Well, I don't know if it'll take me two hours to get there, but I'll probably be in camp by two, probably two, two thirty. And I'm okay with that because I did 10 miles in the first uh, four, four hours and that was all uphill. So still pretty good. I just, uh, I thought about pushing on and getting more miles out of it, but there's so much road walking tomorrow that I'm not. I'm gonna camp in the other half of Fern Cliff once you got the Sullivan Road. And that's where I'm gonna try to sleep or find a place to camp. So hopefully I'm successful. If not, I'm gonna be road walking for a really long time. So all in all, uh, this trip has been exhausting. And uh, the trail itself has been good in some parts, nightmarish in others. And right now I just want to get, I want to complete it. That's what I'm looking the most forward to is getting back to the Jeep and uh, collecting my stuff and then going home. Spending the weekend in my house with my dogs and my wife and uh, putting this whole thing behind me. With the added layer of putting my tarp up tonight, I may uh, be glad to get to camp early if I can. But uh, I gotta clean up my thumbnail. Yeah, it's been a long day. It feels like a long day. I'm gonna get back to it. Since I'm over here, I might as well get this. It's a walking path or actually it's a driving. It's an actual drivable bridge over train tracks. Pretty cool though. This doesn't bode well. They're doing uh, controlled burns at Ferncliff. Yeah, they're doing them where I was planning on camping. I guess the question for me becomes, am I gonna be able to camp there? Uh, it's gonna suck if I can't. It's really gonna suck if I can't. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take me to get there either. I'm estimating an hour at the very least, hour and a half, maybe two, but that's too dark to double back. And pushing on's no help because I don't have a, <clears throat> it's all road walking and it's going to be private property. So. Let's just say, today may be a very, very miserable, miserable day. Oh boy. I'm very wore out. It should be noted that I'm officially past my day six campsite. I have utterly left drop six behind miles ago. And now it's literally, I'm past the day six where I'm supposed to stop tomorrow. So I'm a day ahead of myself. <clears throat> My feet are killing me, but the turn into Ferncliff is right up here. I'm going in maybe 
a couple hundred feet <laughs> wherever I can find trees and I'm throwing up and that's it. My feet are hamburger and uh, I just can't, I can't go any more. So I'll turn this back on once I get there. On the trail, off the road, and I swear to Christ, the first decent area with trees that I can use. I don't care how close to the dam. Oh, that's private property. Son of a buck. Okay, things are gonna get interesting. Mm -hmm. 